I wanted to revisit SETI Astro's Cosmic Clarity Deblurring and Denoising tool once more with a more information-rich image in order to be sure that we're making a fair comparison. Because in the last video, I used an information-poor image that only had a total of 13 hours of integration, which included 13 hours of high-frequency information which contains detail, and 6 hours of low-frequency information which contains color and light. Today, I'm going to revisit Cosmic Clarity's deblurring and denoising capabilities using an image of NGC-1333, which contains 21 hours of total immigration. That's 21 hours of both low and high frequency information. And while I don't consider that to be a really information rich image for LRGB, not yet, it's on the high side, but it is until 34 hours that I begin to consider an image really information rich. It is pretty high, and I want to do a test with the conditions that most persons are going to be using. Most persons that message me tell me they use somewhere between one night and two or three nights of information per image. So on average, that would be anywhere from, say, six to 20 hours or so of integration. So this is just a little above that. Before we get going any further though, I want to show you the image that I made of NGC1333 using pro-level paid software that I completed about two months ago. If you want to take a closer look at it, you can see it on the Sky Story Astro Bin. The link is down in the description. This image of NGC 1333 was created using a combination of PixInsight, all the RC Astro tools, Star Exterminator, Blur Exterminator, and Noise Exterminator, Affinity Photo, and Photolab 8. And I honestly don't think I could have achieved this level of detail without all those professional paid applications. Each one has its own set of strengths that it brings to the development field and its set of weaknesses, which is why I find that no one software application does the job for everything. Hence why I use several applications to complete any single development project. So what I'm going to do is see how close I can get to the quality of that image using my workflow, except replacing the RC Astro tools for cosmic clarity. And I'm going to quickly review the process that I use to develop all the information and create the final image. However, when I say quickly, I mean quickly. Please do not think of this video as a developing tutorial. I'm just listing the methodology for those persons who may wish to try to replicate it for their own experimentation. If you want to learn about my, what I've been told is, somewhat unique developing strategy, look up my image processing playlist. There you'll find several videos that walk you from the beginning to the end of my image processing workflow, with the exception of Photolab 8. I only added Photolab 8 to the workflow a couple months ago because it only came out a couple months ago and I've yet to create a video demonstrating its application to the workflow. As soon as I have that made, I'll add it to the playlist. But in a nutshell, what I did was call all the subs using Urfin View for visual calling and then PixInsight subframe selector for computerized calling. And then I stacked all the subs using PixInsight's weighted batch preprocessor. I'm very fond of PixInsight's stacking capabilities. Since I'm shooting in mono using LRGB filters most of the time, I ended up with LRGB masters. And the RGB masters were aligned to the luminance channel using PixInsight's star alignment tool. They were then color balanced using PixInsight's linear fit tool. And then they were combined in PixInsight's channel combination tool. That left me with two masters, a luminance master and an RGB master. I never combined these in PixInsight because I just don't like the way PixInsight goes about combining those masters. In fact, often I don't combine any of the masters and picks and sites. I end up compositing them all together in Affinity Photo, where I have a lot more control of the color combination process. But this is how I am doing it here to keep things simple. At this point, I had an RGB master and a luminance master ready for cosmic clarity. I opened both in cosmic clarity as 32-bit floating point TIFFs and ran the sharpening tool. The newly sharpened luminance and RGB masters were then reopened in picks and sight where the RGB master was cloned, and one of the clones was dubbed for stars. That clone had its histogram stretch using PixInsight's screen transfer function. It was then denoised in cosmic clarity. Then, in PixInsight, I ran the star exterminator and extracted a denoised stretched RGB star plate from it. Then, on the original unstretched RGB master, I ran star exterminator, extracted and discarded the star plate. Then I applied my Evolve Stretching method, and if you want to learn about that, there'll also be a link to it down in the description. It's a very fast, very easy, and very, very effective method for stretching any and every image that I've ever come across that you can apply in just seconds and gives you an image ideal for developing in a layer-based photo editor. This image was then saved as a 32-bit floating point lossless TIFF, 
and was denoised in cosmic clarity. With the Luminance Master, I ran Star Exterminator and extracted and discarded the star plates. Then I stretched it using the Evolve Stretching Method and denoised it in cosmic clarity. That brought us to layer-based developments in Affinity Photo. In Affinity Photo, the starless luminance and RGB plates were composited together using the Luminosity Composite Mode, which is my standard process for combining luminance to RGB information in a layer-based photo editor. Then, also following what Vermeer standard protocols, I used the Frequency Separation tool to rip the new LRGB combination into its high and low frequency components. High frequency is where detail is found and low frequency is where light and color information is found. By ripping them into their separate components, I can push the development of each further with little to no risk of creating artifacts by running tools meant for one type of information on the total image. I then used what is for me classic synergistic sharpening on the high frequency information to maximize the potential to bring out detail. I'll also provide a link below to one of my videos on synergistic sharpening. And then, using Affinity Photo's extremely powerful Levels tool, I enhance the color, brightness, black points, and gamma of the low-frequency information, ultimately making the image brighter while darkening the space and restricting the lights in the image to where it's supposed to be, avoiding bleed over into the rest of the image, in a way that is often more powerful and effective than even using Affinity Photo's very powerful curve tool. This newly information-rich image, combining all of the L, R, G, and B information, was sent back to Cosmic Clarity for proper denoising. Cosmic Clarity is pretty quick, and once it was operating on it, it only took a couple minutes for it to denoise the L, R, G, and B channels. Once that was done, the image was once again saved as a lossless TIFF, and then opened in Photolab 8 for final development of detail, light, shadow, and color. Using Photolab 8's powerful tonal and color adjustment features, which can easily be localized in a seamless manner to various areas of the image, the brightness, specific tonal ranges, and color characteristics of the image were adjusted, and the image received a little further sharpening using Photolab 8's unique Clearview Plus tool. This yielded this final image. Overall, it's pretty good. You can do better by using paid software, but it is pretty good. Let's compare it to the other version of this image, the one that I developed using all the same software except instead of using Cosmic Clarity, I used RC Astro's Blur Exterminator and Noise Exterminator. As labeled, the image on the left was sharpened and denoised with Cosmic Clarity, and the image on the right was sharpened and denoised with RC Astro. And as you can see, it does make a difference. As covered in the previous video, RC Astro does indeed remain the gold standard. Nonetheless, Cosmic Clarity does not give a bad outcome. The image is colorful, sharp, there's contrast where there should be, and Cosmic Clarity gives a lot of crisp detail, especially where the image is bright and information rich. But where Cosmic Clarity suffers is in removing noise in particular in those areas of an image that are darker or lower in information. Notice the dim regions all around the image where you see dark areas and some silvery gaseous areas. Notice how soft it is. I had to soften those regions using the Gaussian blur to smooth out the appearance of the cloud because Cosmic Clarity wasn't able to do that too well in those dimmer regions of the image. In particular, center middle right, right here in the circle, I had to run bilateral blur fairly hard to cover up some banding that had occurred. I'll zoom in here and you can still see it a little bit. For whatever reason, I'm not a programmer, I don't understand why it's harder in those areas, but for whatever reason, Cosmic Clarity's denoising tool still suffers in darker or lower information areas of an image. Whereas the RC Astro denoiser gives very consistent and nice results all throughout an image, regardless of whether it's a darker or brighter region of the image. The noise exterminator's only requirement is that for the best results, you need to run it on nonlinear information. Cosmic Clarity's sharpening tool also suffered a little bit, mainly in the reduction of the halos around stars. Blur Exterminator is consistently able to tighten the stars up even more. However, in terms of sharpening non-stellar structure, Cosmic Clarity's performance is very similar to that of the Blur Exterminator. You will doubtless notice that the structure looks softer within the Cosmic Clarity image. But that was mainly because I had to introduce some intentional softening to cosmetically improve the failings of Cosmic Clarity's noise reduction software. It just doesn't smooth out areas as well as the noise exterminator. So, as Frank over at SETI Astro says himself, RC Astro's Blur Exterminator and Noise Exterminator remain the gold standard for sharpening and denoising. But, with that said, 
cosmic clarity is definitely catching up. It gives an attractive, usable result. It's still weak in areas where the tone is dark and the, and the image may be information poor. And Blur Exterminator consistently manages to give tighter stars. But Frank is always developing cosmic clarity, and pretty fast too. I think with more time to train the AI on more images, and further refine the software, it's going to be much more impressive than what we're even seeing here. And for persons who at this time need to use freeware, such as Cyril and GIMP for developing, Cosmic Clarity is a great tool for improving the quality of the images that those software applications can output. And all these tools are always improving, and one of these days, who knows, maybe we won't be able to tell the difference. But for right now, in my opinion, if you have the money to get it, RC Astro is the way to go. And if you don't, or you just prefer freeware, Cosmic Clarity is a great option. In either case, a hearty thanks to Frank over at SETI Astro for bringing this tool, Cosmic Clarity, to the astrophotography community, and for his ongoing efforts to make it better and better. If you have any thoughts, questions, or observations, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to learn about my development process, please take a look at the links below and go in particular to the image processing playlist where I go in depth into the theory and practical application of the approach that I take to developing astrophotography. Thank you for watching, and if you're fortunate enough to not have clouds overhead, like I do and have had for well over a month now, then get out there and shoot that wonderful sky.